Hello, everyone. We welcome you into the Pioneer Basketball Show with Pioneer coach Megan Price, who begins her second year this season, a year after winning a South Atlantic Conference Tournament Championship and advancing to the NCAA semifinals. This has been the season that has began without certain parts from last year, certain of the certain pieces, such as Maddie Sutton, who uh, graduated, moved on, playing a little professional basketball, doing some really good yeah. things. It's a big piece yeah. to miss. We welcome you. How's it been? Uh, it's been great, you know, so far. Uh, just learning a lot this year, and I yeah. think it's uh, definitely a, gro a growing year for us, or at least a growing semester, because uh, like I've told you previously, I'd hate to play this in January and February, but, you know, just trying to get to that point. All right, we get started off this year with a, a couple of uh, uh, the challenges, I, I guess, are always interesting, because it seems like we always get the same ones. And what was interesting, it was yeah. the team that, knocked us out of the NCAA tournament from a year ago. Belmont Abbey and North Greenville, you opened up with, um, you really weren't sure what you were going to get. You know, we had some, uh, a little bit of a change through the summer. Who was going to be the point guard? Who was going to be that score? Who was going to be that inside presence? What did you learn about your first two games of the year? You know, we got in foul trouble early during that game too. So that was a big thing because uh, last year we didn't dip into the bench a lot. And so I yeah. think even that early on, I learned, okay, well, we've got to be able to play our bench some and give minutes there because you know, I'm used to playing people for 40, 38, 40 minutes. And so that was a change for us. But I was really proud of the grit of our team because I didn't know what to expect going in. And you're at their place, and so it's a different environment. The score was really low, um, and I felt like it was a defensive battle, and I thought our kids really fought that game. North Greenville was very similar, too. I think it was more yeah. of a, a gritty, gutty performance that you came out on top. Yeah, and it was it was difficult bouncing off uh, what happened at Belmont Abbey and then turning around and coming back and playing immediately the next day in that first game. And so I was proud of our kids for fighting back. And I said, you know, regardless, a win's a win. So we got to celebrate wins whenever we get them. And I thought it was a huge win for us. So they start one and one in the uh, South Atlantic Conference, Conference Carolinas Challenge. And then you look at your opening start to the South Atlantic Conference. What are you thinking when you see the teams and, the, and how they were ranked in the preseason? Yeah. And, and that's who we had to begin. You know, we knew um, uh, Carson Newman and Catawba both returned everyone. And so that was a huge thing for us moving in. How can we moving into those games, be ready for those games, you know, and, and it helps to start with the win um, at the challenge and then obviously playing Belmont Abbey so close. And so just preparing us for that adversity that you're going to face and being able to withstand runs, you know, against an experienced team. And I think it helped our team to understand the level that we're going to have to be at second semester, uh, not only in order to win basketball games, but if you're going to compete for a stack championship again, it's going to take a lot more uh, than what we were doing first semester. But also a lot of that is just figuring out those pieces and those rotations like we talked about. And, you know, we start out at the challenge and it's a little different than coming into Carson Newman and who I was playing in rotations and figuring out who can guard defensively and how we're going to get stops and grind it out. Because I think that's always been, I mean, in my coaching philosophy especially, um, who can grind whenever you can't make shots. And so, you know, just learning those rotations. And we're still in that boat to where we're right. still learning – you know, people are still shocking me every single day. And so, it's a, I mean, it's a good place to be. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights as we start South Atlantic Conference play. And we open up, of course, with Carson Newman. It's a team two yeah. years ago that the uh, Pioneers swept, went 3-0 and during the season. And then last year only got to play one time, an overtime loss. Didn't get a chance to see them in the postseason. But you start out here in, in this contest and, you know, man, it's, we got to open up with Carson Newman. And, and things are nip and tuck. We're learning about some young freshmen that are coming in off the bench. And it was that third quarter. That, Carson Newman has been this way to this point in the season. Yeah. Their third quarters have been a no, uh, just a knockout. Yeah, it really has. And I think for them, it's it, the thing that you can't do with them is you can't lay down for two minutes. Because I truthfully felt like our, our girls fought for 32 to 35 minutes. Yeah. And in that five to seven minute span, the game just changes like that. And, you know, they go on like a, a huge run. And I'm looking at the scoreboard. We're down, you know seven or eight and the next thing I know we're down 25 and you know I've called two timeouts so uh, it's a team that if you don't withstand their runs and you don't you don't lock down defensively during those runs it's going to be difficult to win a basketball game like that they're very seasoned um, and like I said he returned everybody so I was actually proud of our team that that game alone showed me the grit and who we can be when we put together 40 minutes. We learned who could score. We learned who could come yeah. inside and, and do some things because a lot of that in your preseason and the scrimmages with some Division One teams, it was yeah. just their speed. They covered that up, and you couldn't really tell, I think, a lot. Yes, of yeah, and, and I think, too, um, just continuing to learn who's going to grind for us for 40 because I think uh, – there's a difference if you can step on the floor and you can play hard for 20 minutes, but can you go for 40? 
And, you know, can you fill those roles off the bench? And what is your role? And do you know your role? And then can you step into that role and uh, be everything that the team needs you to be too? So I think those are still things that we're figuring out along the way. You go on the road to Catawba, and that was got very interesting. So you've got back-to-back -back teams going to put immense pressure on you. Yeah. And, and do you have that ball handle, and do you have that person? And Sophie Henry's been that person to start out for you handling the ball. Jordan Rogers has come in and handled the basketball very well. So I think you had to – determine in those first two games yeah. who's handling the basketball. Right? Yeah, and then it's huge because, you know, we're used to having Brady at that trail four spot, and so we've had to change some things up with our press offense, and then what are we going to do, you know, in situations where they bring everybody up and they're denying the basketball. And, you know, Alyssa Walker's done a great job of that too because we've just brought her up at times, and I've had to tell her, like, hey, just bring the basketball up. You can handle it. And so, you know, filling that part of the role with press offense the way that Maddie did, I think Alyssa really has stepped up and been able to help us in crucial situations where, like, Sophie or Jordan are tired or maybe they're in foul trouble and we're needing somebody just to bring it up and to relieve pressure from them for a couple possessions. And so I'm really proud of her for doing that. Yeah, Catawba has the speed that, and they have that inside-outside punch as well. But yeah. you went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I mean, you did go the 40 minutes yeah. with them as well. Yeah, and I think we're still, you know, learning some things with our post defense. And then, you know, are we going to zone more this year? And we've changed some things up. You know, we zoned the whole game at Queens. And so just the difference, we came out trying to do that a little bit against LMU, but I knew that probably wasn't going to work for very long just because of how well they shoot it. Uh, you know, but I think we're able to mix our defenses up more this year, and that helps us guard more in the post uh, because I know we've been struggling there a little bit. But I think overall, Alyssa's battled and, and honestly uh, been a great rebounder for us the last three or four games. It's just – you know, that, that switch has been flipped, and, and uh, she's really battled in the post defensively and getting rebounds. Limestone was the third conference game of the year, and, and that was the kind of don't don't sleep on this team. Yeah. This is a team that has traditionally yeah. been strong. This is a team that's hosted, you know, NCAA yeah. regionals as late as uh, three years ago, I believe it was. And uh, Quinn Bird didn't play last year, and she was back. She yeah. showed why she is maybe one of our more elite players in the league. Yeah, and I think it's difficult because even um, some of the returners that didn't play last year that are playing huge minutes this year, uh, I think it's a, it's a learning, you know, semester for them because we lost, I mean, we beat them by, you know, 30 points last year. And so your mindset going in, it's hard to change a student athlete's mindset going in saying, hey, I promise this team is really good and you can show film and you can do those things, but until you're in that situation to where – you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and you're playing with them the whole time um, for that 40 minutes and it's a battle and you look up and you know, you're know you being beat by 15 or 20. I think that changes the mindset. And so I think next time when we play these teams and especially Limestone going back to their place, um, I think we'll have a different mindset going in yeah. and, and that battling mindset. Go to UVA Wise again, these are some of the top teams in the league so that you've opened up with. You go to Wise, you fail behind, you, you battle back and um, again, this is a team that returned to everybody and yeah. added a couple of pieces as well. Uh, they had gotten off to a slow start, so that was a big win for them yeah, at huge. home against you guys. Yeah, and I think it's that, uh, you know, they beat us last year for the regular SAC uh, championship. And so I think that was a, a huge thing for them coming into our game is they want to compete, and I know they want to beat us. Yeah. And so, you know, I go back and I watch them on film from this weekend, and they don't look like the same team that played us. But I've tried to tell, you know, our team that everybody is going to treat us that way. Because to everybody else, we still are the SAC champions from last year. Mm -hmm. And so regardless of who you have coming in this year, or who's playing, or if you're new, or if you're a returner, you know, that mindset is still the same. Everybody is treating us like a SAC champion. And so you're going to get everybody's best on every single night. Nobody's laying down and saying, okay, well, their record doesn't look as good as it was last year. And so we're still getting everybody's best. And, and I think we're, we're learning now to compete at that level um, that we were at last year because we're not the same team. But just my biggest thing with our team is how can we compete every single game? And then once you compete every single game for 40 minutes, you know, you put yourself in great positions to win a basketball game. And that came into fruition a midweek game in Charlotte against Queens. It was a, a battle back and forth. You know, yeah. they, they made a couple of shots. They got some rebounds. They got some stops. We weren't hitting on all cylinders. Then that second half happened and that third quarter happened. And uh, there was a flip that was switched or a switch that was yeah. flipped as far as uh, Alyssa Walker was concerned. You kind of had talked about that. It's her coming out game for you and you were – Extremely excited to see that happen yes. for her because that also gives not only her confidence, but I think it gave the entire team confidence. Yeah, I agree. And I think she doesn't know how good she's going to be yet. Um, you know, and I have her for two more years. And I think uh, what makes it fun with me and her coaching her is that ability to be able to step out and shoot that three. So anytime, just basic, you know, a basic pick and roll, like you have to be able to guard that step out. You've got to talk about how am I going to contest her three or if she slips on a hedge or something. You've got to be able to guard all of those things with her. And that makes her, I think, very dangerous. 
and I, you know, hopefully continuing to move forward, she realizes how good she can be for us because, you know, we, I still go home and say, you know, after the game on Saturday and say, hey, we've got to get, figure out a way to get Alyssa more shots uh, because her percentages are through the roof. Right. And, um, and maybe that's her choice of shots, but uh, her shot selection, she needs to get more shots up for a basketball team to be able to uh, win games. All right, then come home, Lincoln Memorial. It's the, well, the tournament championship yeah. game from a season ago. There's yeah. a lot of parts from both of those teams that weren't there. Devin's team has been banged up. They've been hurt. He comes in with about seven or eight, uh, really, as he considered it healthy. You go in with, not really sure with how are we going <laughs> to compete against this team. Yeah. And it became a guard game. Uh, it, it became a guard-oriented game. You know, you never came out of it. He didn't ever come out of it. And it was that defensive struggle. And we didn't come out on, on the good end of that. But uh, I think in the contest, you learn that there's a certain, you got some players that are going to battle for you through, through the end. Yeah, and, you know, it's crazy because I've always been very um, set and, hey, this person's going to play this position and this person's going to play this position. So as a coach, I, after the game on Saturday with LMU, I'm learning, hey, I think I can move some pieces around and we're going to play whoever's going to grind defensively for us. And if that means that we're playing four to five guards, that's what we're doing too. Um, and so, you know, I really, after that game, that was a huge stepping stone for our team, I think. Uh, and just that confidence. And then that physic it was very physical game. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it was great for a lot of our, our new people to understand, you know, that level of, you know, where we're playing at. And then just our returners battling in that game too. It's different than any game we've played in so far. And I just thought that, our kids did an amazing job with me throwing them in different roles than what they're used to and just being able to, to get it done. And I was really proud of them. Pioneers have started off two and six to start this season as we go through those games. And we'll have this Christmas run. It's a non-conference week this week. And then uh, they return back into South Atlantic Conference play, welcoming Newberry. It, the one thing I think that what I have seen and I know that we've talked about is just our defense is still there. We still rebound yeah. the basketball. You want to be better at rebounding, but I think we're yeah. getting there. You did too. a nice little challenge. Uh, but you also want to score it. And I think that's, we're going to have to find, we've had some scores. We've had some people step up. Yeah. Jayla's had the big game against Queens with the 23 points. One of the biggest offensive games this year. Um, but where's that offense going to come? Where do you see that coming from? How, how can you be better consistently offensively going forward? You know, I think a lot of it too is, and we have been better defensively, but if we can continue to get stops defensively, a lot of that drives our offense and we've got to continue to push more in transition. So, you know, anytime somebody misses it, that was our bread and butter last year. We just pushed in transition and we went and scored and we found Maddie, uh, you know, or found Meyer, somebody running the floor like that. And so, We've tried to work on that some more, but I think that's something going even into this week that we're going to have to continue to work on is really pushing in transition, but also knowing when to slow the game down. And that change of pace, uh, when you, you had somebody like Marta last year who understood that change of pace because she's been around for a while. And so, you know, I have, I have two new, you know, point guards um, who I wasn't really expecting to put at least one of them in the point guard position and now having to teach that change of pace. You know, it's, it's a lot of film and a lot of growing in those areas and being patient and just helping them understand. But I think scoring-wise, a lot of it's going to have to be determined by if Alyssa's going to step up, you know, and I really believe yeah. she will. And I know we're going to get Bree back in the, in the next couple of games too, and that's going to help with our scoring, I think, too, because we're really missing some scoring at that four spot because our fours can shoot it, but we don't have anybody who can really get downhill and put pressure on the defense. So if we're not making shots, you know, that's a struggle for us. And so we've lived and died by the three in the past years, and we lived by it last year. And so I'm teaching, you know, all of our players this year that you can't live and die by that. I've got to read closeouts. People are still treating you like shooters, so we got to get to the rack more. And I was proud of us on Saturday because I think we shot 14 or 15 free throws, and we're trying to get there 15 or 20 times, you know, or at least shoot 15 or 20 free throws. And so I think we're growing in those areas, and those are things – that I've seen us apply from practice that we've been working on. And, uh, and so I am proud of our group for that because I think we continue to move forward because we are continuing to apply what I'm teaching in practice. And that's a big thing for us. Pioneers could get that lead last season, throw it down into the paint and to Maddie, and she would get to the free throw line. I think that was the recipe, you yes. know, because there was that post presence yes. that people knew we've got to stop her. And so it allowed some open shots from the outside. When we have had those, you know, it was, it's interesting because Maya Belton has been that person off the bench yeah. that has come in and knocked down those shots and given us that boost. You put her in a different role, you're expecting her to do this, and we're expecting her to make them. Yeah. And you know what? You know, she's not making that, but what she's taken her game to, uh, consistently she's not making that. But what she's taken her game to is penetrating, finishing in the paint. She's always been a rebounder and a, sh and a rim protector. We've she always really known has, that. Yeah. But she has really developed into 
really one of our all-around best players. Yeah, she really has, and I'm so proud of that growth for her because I think that the change, too, that happened early on is we did score, you know, quite a bit in the Division One games, but I think it went back to the fact that Maya was making shots. And so when she's going 6 for 12 or 7 from 12 from the three, well, the scoring is way up. And so um, that confidence, you know, coming into that first game and then not making shots I think was a little bit of an adjustment for her. And so we've just had to talk a lot about, hey, how can I find different ways to score, whether that's an offensive putback, whether that's attacking, getting to the rim, you know, getting to the free throw line, those things. And so I'm just proud of her for making those adjustments so quick and understanding the game. You know, she's learning the game too because she is in a different role from last year. You know, Jay started for us, but Maya started the last half of the year. But I think it's just a different role of, hey, we expect some things from her. And uh, I think she's embraced that, and I think she'll continue. I mean, for Maya, I think she can only continue to get better. I mean, the sky's the limit for her. Jordan Rogers is another uh, pleasant surprise that has come in. You know, yeah. she didn't get a lot of minutes last year. It's just not that we learned a whole lot about her game. And then she has been kind of thrown into it. She handles the basketball. She handles the pressure. Yeah. You're not really sure where she's going to go all the time yeah, with it. Yeah, my heart rate's always up. It is. <laughs> but it is, it's one of those things where she, she'll she make that. She finishes. Right now, I think she is one of our best finishers in yes. the paint. Yes. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing, you know, because even Saturday, we kept going back to that high ball screen. And uh, I had a couple of people ask me, well, why didn't we run something else? I'm like, because she's like nine for 14, you know, from field goal range. And so, uh, it's big because if she goes six for 14, but then she gets to the line the other three times, I mean, you're talking about somebody who is scoring for us inside the three, nine out of 14 times. That's a big, that's something that we've been missing, you know. And so for her to be able to have the ability to do that, um, I think it's huge for our team moving forward. And, you know, and I'm hoping that also when Bree gets back, that'll take a little pressure off Jordan and we can go two different people to get to the rack, um, you know, and then just finding, continuing to find those pieces because I know what I'm going to get out of Jay. Uh, and, and hopefully continue to know what I'm going to get out of Maya and then out of Jordan. And so just add in somebody else who can get to that rack, but then shoot that three, two, I think is really going to help us. All right. So a little break from the conference schedule this week, but it is a huge week, I think, in, yeah. as the measuring stick is concerned. North Georgia, it's been a traditional power in our region. And then Lander, who has been the power in our region, ranks in the top 10, I think number seven yeah. going in this week. Home against North Georgia midweek and then on the road to Lander coming up this Saturday. So it's a big week. I mean, what are you expecting out of your team this week against these teams? The biggest thing I, I wrote down for this week is just to compete because we have to continue to grow and we don't have anything to lose in these games. You know, so for us moving forward, um, I just think we have to compete in every possession. And I'm big about breaking down every possession or every five minutes when we get those media timeouts. Can we compete for five minutes here and then move to that next five minutes? and just continue to compete every five minutes until you put together 40. And it's gonna allow us to see where we're at and then allow individuals to see where they are. And hey, this is where, you know, for those people that I have for, you know, years to come um, and over the next three and four years, it's gonna allow them to say, okay, this is what top level competition looks like. This is where I want to be, or this is, hey, I feel like I'm measuring up to this person. I could work on these things. Um, and so I think it's gonna help us in all areas. And it goes back to like, we don't have anything uh, that's, you know, we don't have anything to prove, they do. Right. And so um, for us, we're going into the game with no pressure and we're gonna play the best that we can for 40 minutes and then we'll see where we're at at the end of it. Pioneers against North Georgia Wednesday, travel to Lander Saturday before jumping back into South Atlantic Conference action. We'll talk about the games this week, next week. We'll talk about previewing the South Atlantic Conference prior to the Christmas break. Thanks as always. Thank you. She's Pioneer coach Megan Price. Join us this week for Pioneer Basketball, North Greenville on Wednesday, and it will be North Greenville, North Georgia on Wednesday, yeah. and then Saturday against Lander. For everyone behind the scenes for the Pioneer Basketball Show with Pioneer coach Megan Price, I'm Brian Staten. Go Pioneers!